In this video, we want to look at how to find the UDP checksum. So I'm going to be referring to the same website that I've emailed you. So in this example, before we start, the important thing to know is that one hexadecimal digit equals four binary digits. checksum for UDP is calculated as a uh, four digit hexadecimal number. So four digit hexadecimal number which means four times four it's a 16 bit binary number. Okay, that's the UDP checksum. So in this example if we look at it checksum is 0x35c5 so the checksum is 35c5 which is a four digit hexadecimal number so how do we go about calculating the checksum first thing is we look at the IP header then we look at the UDP header and pick up information from that to calculate the actual UDP checksum so referring to the website or the link that I had already sent you so in this case, if you look at uh, the information that we need, so we need the source IP address, we need the destination IP address, we need the protocol value from the IP header. This reserved field is all zeros or eight zeros. The length, this length comes from the UDP header. Okay. Uh, then when we look at the UDP header, we need the source port number, the destination port number, we need the length, and we need the data from uh, the UDP header. So looking at this example, uh, these are the source IP destination IP, the source port destination port, and the data which is given to you. This is already available uh, in a Wireshark capture. Okay. Now in this table, uh, it's not necessary that we have to convert the decimal values to binary and then to hex, we could do it directly but it's mainly for explanation purposes that this has been shown. What is important is that uh, we group values into 16 bits together at a time. So in this case, when we look at the source IP address from this packet, okay, so we write them down as two octets, which means 16 bits. Okay, and we can directly convert these numbers to hex. So use the calculator on your machine okay. and this view is available the programmer view so in this case uh, if I say 192.168 so uh, with decimal selected I put in 192 the hex value is C0 and similarly 168 the hex value is A, A8 so that's the conversion C0, A8. Okay. Similarly, uh, for the remaining portion of the source IP, 0 gets converted to a 0 in hex, but since it's supposed to be 8 bits, we write it as double zero. 31, again, we can look at it. 31 in, in hex is 1F. Okay, that's what it is. Then similarly, we look at the destination IP. We write it down in this format and we convert them to the corresponding hex values. Then the next thing we need is, as I said, you know, the reserved part. The reserved is nothing but it's just a bunch of eight zeros. Okay, so there it is, eight zeros. And uh, they get converted to so uh, a unit of four zeros, four binary digits becomes one hex digit, a zero, and then again the next four zeros become a zero, and then the second number seventeen is actually uh, the protocol number for UDP. So if you look at any UDP packet, right, I've got an example here. So 
within the within the IP, if you expand the IP, it should show you the protocol number to be 17. So usually uh, in this example, it says protocol UDP light 136 because this is a capture that is using UDP light as a protocol. Okay, but no, so that's why the protocol number is 136. But normally, uh, if you are using plain UDP, it would show you UDP as number 17. That's that's a number assigned to the protocol itself. Okay, so that's that's where the 17 comes from here. So if you expand any packet in Wireshark which is using UDP, it would have 17 as a number lifted as a protocol. So when you convert 17 to uh, a hex, it becomes 11. Okay, you can try that out here. 17 in hex is 11. Okay. Then we move on to the next part. You got padding. Padding is again nothing but a sequence of eight zeros. So in this case, those eight zeros get converted to double zero in hex. And the length, this length comes from the UDP uh, header itself. So again, if I refer to this example, if I expand the UDP parts, again, it's a lightweight UDP protocol in this case, there's a field called length 20. Okay, so this is where you get the length from. So again, in this example, the length happens to be 10. So that 10 when converted to uh, hex, okay, gives you an A, all right? Uh, since it's only a single digit, we append it with a zero in the beginning because we need that the entire thing should be 16 bits. So since the answer of 10 is A, we add a zero in front of it which still makes keeps it as 10 right then we move on to the next part which is the UDP header okay so we look at the UDP source port in this case the port number is 20 okay so 20 in hex is a 14 right again since we need it to be 16 bits 16 bit means four hex digits we append zeros in the front to make it a four digit hex number the destination port in this example is 10. 10 again converted to hex will be an A. Again, we need it to be a four digit number, so we add three zeros. The UDP length, this is the same length which we saw here from the Wireshark capture, okay, from the UDP header is 10. So 10 again comes to A, and we add three zeros to make it a four digit number. UDP data, uh, in this case, is given to us the data here it says two bytes data is 4869 okay so we write the data 4869 okay now the next thing we do is we just add up all these values again you can use the calculator you can add them up so if, if I do that with hex selected I go C 0 uh, A 8 plus zero zero one F plus C zero A eight plus one E eleven plus A plus fourteen plus A again, A again, and 48, 69. This is the answer I get, 1CA39. Now, as previously mentioned, that the checksum should always be a four-digit number. So what we do is we remove this one from the beginning, the, the first digit, and we add it to CA39, okay? So we take CA39. And we use the overflow that was a one and add it. So we get CA 3A. Okay, that's the answer that we end up getting CA 3A. Right now, what we need to do is we need to find out the ones complement 
of CA3A. Okay, once complement simply means that you know uh, the value of uh, CA3A in binary, whatever is the value, we flip these digits. So CA3A in binary is given here. Okay, one one zero zero, whatever. So if we just change these each digit, so we flip it, so one becomes a zero and 0 becomes a 1. So whatever we get as the answer, we convert it back to hex. That's our final checksum. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, uh, since we've got CA3A, what we can do is we can say FF, FF minus whatever we got as a sum, CA3A. Okay, We get the same answer back, 3, 5, C5. Okay, so FF, FF minus the answer. So we end up getting this thing. So if we again compare this 3 5 C5, this is the checksum within the packet. Okay, So that's what we get as an answer for our checksum value. This one important thing here, uh, in terms of the data, in this case the data was simple, 4869 as we've already seen. Sometimes, like in this example, data could actually be bigger, it could be something like this, okay, a bigger number. So in this case, what you will do is you'll, you'll write it down. So if this is how your data looks like, the way this will be written down is something like this, 68, 65, 6C, 6C. Suppose you end up getting something like that. Let's assume if I end up getting something like this at the end, okay, with only two digits, then I should add two more digits to make it four digits. So if your data is more than four digits, then this is the way you would write it down, and then all of it would get added when we do the addition at the end. Okay, so I hope this makes uh, the checksum calculation a bit more clear.